Thank you, Jesse Martin, Jesse Martin and Jesse Martin Band, for getting us started. Welcome, everybody, to Homecoming 2022 for the graduating class of 2023. We start off with the candidate for Homecoming King, Michael Hooper. Mike was escorted by his parents, Mike and Sandra Hooper. Michael's activities, including being a member of the wrestling team. He also enjoys riding dirt bikes and hunting. Michael's plans for the future is to be able to get into the operator's union. His advice to end classmates, the four years go by fast. Make the most of it while you can. Michael Hooper! Our first candidate for Hope Coming Queen, Hannah Gillespie! <laughs> Hannah is escorted by her mom, Angelique Gillespie. Hannah's favorite activity is playing softball in the spring. And when that's not in season, she enjoys hanging out with friends. She hopes one day to become a veterinary technician and maybe move to Oregon when she retires. Her advice to end classes, make sure to make friends with smart kids. Hannah Gillespie. Our candidate, 14, Will Boot. Will is being escorted by his brother, George Eisenberg, and his sister-in-law, Amber Eisenberg. As of right now, Will plans to attend the Ohio Technical Bowl. His advice to men's classes, be responsible and have as much fun as possible and enjoy it because it goes by really fast. Will move! For homecoming queen, Abigail Christine. <laughs> Abigail is escorted by her mom and dad, Joanna and Keith Christine. Abby cheers football and basketball, varsity cheer. She also participates in Geneva Extreme Cheer outside of school. Abby plans on attending Florida Atlantic University to major in neuroscience and also plans to continue her degree career. She has a lot of advice for the underclassmen. Her best advice, though, is for underclassmen to get involved as much as you can. Get your work done and study. So make time to enjoy the little things and friendships that high school will bring. It'll all be over before you know it. So cherish it. Abigail Christine. Our next game for King, Owen Evans. Owen is escorted by his parents.
Warriors team as coached by her mom, Amy Garlisi, and her dad, Jeff Kinnaman. Warriors involved in marching band, concert band, jazz band, and is also a captain on the girls' soccer team. Glory plans to attend Kent State University and major in English childhood education to become a first grade teacher. Glory's advice to us after this, branch out and you will learn more about yourself than you realize. Good advice, Glory Kinnanen. Our next candidate for homecoming team, Jack Cafaro. Jack is being escorted by his parents, Justin and Megan Cafaro, and his little sister, Claire. Jack is a three-year baseball learner. He does the voice of the Eagles and GHS Media and is a member of Key Club, Philanthropy Club, and the Asheville County Youth Leadership. His plans for the future? Study broadcast journalism. I'm sure you're going to hear him broadcasting one day real soon. His advice to underclassmen? Most everything that you want is just outside your comfort zone. So never be afraid to meet new people or try something new. Jack Cafaro. Our next candidate is for Hope Coming Queen, Ella Winchell. <laughs> Ella is being escorted by her father, Jerry Winchell, and brother. Andrew Winchell. Ella's activities include football and basketball cheerleader, historian of NHS, class treasurer for the past three years, and she's also part of the yearbook of that. In the future, Ella plans on attending college to study criminology. Ella's advice for the classmates is to enjoy your time in high school while it lasts. Because let me tell you, it goes by super fast. Ella Winchell! <laughs> Our next standard for homecoming team. Stephanie Lekazin. <laughs> Stephanie is escorted by his mom, Nicoletta Lekazin, and dad, Kaylin Lekazin. Stephanie's activities include being the senior class president as well as the National Honor Society Vice President and the Key Club Treasurer. And the Key Club Treasurer. Stefan is also a four-time General Boys Soccer winner. Plans for the future? Stefan plans to attend college for mechanical engineering after he graduates. His advice to the underclassmen, get involved in as much as you can, as soon as you can. Don't wait. Get involved. Stefan Leggison. Our next candidate for homecoming queen, Riley Park. Riley is being escorted by her mom, Cynthia and dad, Jeremy Park. Riley runs cross country as well as indoor and outdoor track. She's part of the yearbook staff 
Youth leadership. Key club. And National Honor Society. Riley plans on going to college after high school and maybe getting a goldfish with McKenna Cinco. Her advice from the classmen, make sure to have fun with your friends, even when you are stressed, because you will remember those times forever. Riley Park! Johnny Hazler! is our next candidate for homecoming week. He is escorted by his mom, Anna, and dad, John Hazel, as well as his big brother, Owen, and his little sister, Ella Hazler. Johnny is one of the captains of the football team, as well as participates on the track team. Johnny is on student council serving as the senior class vice president. And he's a counselor for the summer camp, Camp Whitwood. His plans for the future are to attend an undecided university to study wildlife biology. But before that, Johnny plans to enjoy his senior year in high school. Johnny's advice to the classmates would be to treat everyone like their characters in a book about you and always try to see both sides of the story. Great advice, Johnny Hazler. And last, but certainly not least, our final candidate for homecoming queen, Haley Phoenix. Haley is being escorted by her mother and father, Jennifer and Todd Beaton. Part of her activities include cheering. She's a captain of the girls' soccer team, throws shot put, and distance during track season. Haley is also president of the National Honor Society and is a member of Key Club and Philanthropy Club. Her plans for the future are to attend Florida Atlantic University and work with a degree in anesthesiology and nutrition. Haley's advice to the classmen, get involved as much as possible. The more opportunities you take, excuse me, the more opportunities you take on, the more memories you will make. Haley Phoenix. And now it is my pleasure to turn the microphone over to the principal of Geneva High School, Mr. Doug Weatherholt. I would personally like to thank everyone for coming out tonight on such a beautiful night to support our students. We are thankful to have here tonight last year's King and Queen, Gavin Gudinas and Lydia Reese. It is my pleasure to introduce you for 2022 homecoming, homecoming King and Queen. This year's King is Johnny Hazler. This year's queen is Lori Kennedy. Congratulations. 
Congratulations to our homecoming team and queen, and thank you to everybody on the homecoming court. We made it another big special year. Now I turn it back over to our band.
Hello everybody and welcome to GHS Media. Tonight I have a special guest with me for Geneva's homecoming game against Edgewood, former head basketball coach and newly retired teacher, Mr. Brad Ellis. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well, Jack. Thanks for having me. Yep, it should be a good game tonight. You know, Edgewood, they throw the ball a lot more than any other team Geneva's faced all year. Coach, you know what defense Geneva's looking to run tonight? Well, I think they've been running most of a 4-3 of a most of the year, but don't be surprised if they do something a little bit different tonight, maybe try to put a little bit of pressure on the Edgewood quarterback, make him try to make maybe some quick decisions and maybe get a few turnovers. Absolutely. Now, Geneva's defense, they've had a plethora of turnovers all season. I believe they have close to 15. Like we said, Edgewood throws the ball 60% of the time. What, what would you say the keys to the offense tonight are for the Eagles? Well, I think just like they've done most of their the year is control the football, move the chains, keep ahead of the chains, uh, dominate the uh, the offensive line is a big key with the type of offense that the Eagles run. And uh, I, I think that's uh, co coming in. Coach Shimsky wants to make sure that they, they maintain drives and, uh, and take care of the football. Eagles – have deferred. They're going to receive in the second half. And they're kicking now. It's Owen Pfeiffer lining up. Now, Coach, this is your first football game in how long? Seeing one or doing one on a uh, broadcast? Broadcasting one. Broadcasting, well, I did for a number of years ESPN 970, but since what COVID hit, so what's that, 2009? The football season of 2019 was the last season I did. So I might be a little rusty tonight, so you got to carry me on here a little bit. Hey, that's okay. I don't think I don't think my my grandparents at home will mind. <laughs> that's the junior Pfeiffer lining up to kick. And we are underway at the Spire. Ball's picked up around the 15. And the Warriors take over on the 30-yard line. Good coverage that time by the Eagles uh, kickoff team. Kind of strung it out, made the running back or the receiver run wide, didn't get a whole lot of yards on that return. I spoke with multiple players and coaches this week. They, they're expecting to put a lot of pressure on this offensive line that they feel is not Edgewood's strongest point as they get to haul quick there. Yeah, they were in the shotgun formation, uh, spread, had two wide receivers right, two left, empty backfield, and tried to throw a quick screen pass. And, again, that early pressure by the Eagles front four there uh, caused 
the quarterback uh, Hall to get rid of that ball too premature. Second and 10 from the 25. That's Lucas on the carry. He's wrapped pretty, pretty quickly near the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long. Like uh, Hayden Deemer, the defensive end, or outside linebacker, stood up, stood at, or at number six. I think that was who it was. Did a nice job of contain, made the runner turn inside, and then made the tackle. Yeah, this year they, the coach, coaching staff especially feels as though this linebacking core is the premium of their defense. That's Hall on the shotgun. Throwing. That's incomplete. Queen on the coverage. That forces a quick three and out for the Warriors to start the game. Fourth and 14 with 11-11 left to play in the opening quarter. Yeah, that was a good coverage, as you said, by Logan Queen. And if he would have caught the football, he would have been definitely short of the, the first down because of the coverage. As the head coach, Donald Chimsky, who also calls defensive plays, he couldn't ask for a better opening drive on the defensive side of the football. Exactly. Three and out. The Eagles are going to get the ball. Should get pretty good field position here. We got too many. Looks like we have a flag. It looked like Edgewood, after they broke the huddle, had a, a offensive player run to the sideline. So too many men. That's going to be a five-yard penalty against the Warriors. Yeah, I, I don't believe they would be going for it. They're probably just going to try to get the Eagles defense to jump, get an extra five yards, give their punter some more room to kick. But instead, they went back five yards. Yeah, their strategy kind of backfired a little bit. Hall with a quick kick. That's fielded by Smith at the 50. Find some room to his right, and he'll be taken down around the Edgewood 35. Yeah, it looks, again, nice job that time by Smith. Caught the football and ran straight ahead. Didn't try to make anything more of what he had. And Eagles are going to take over first down. A great field position on their own 35-yard line. Yeah, this Eagles offense has been phenomenal on their opening drives of the game. Only one game this year. They have not scored on their first possession. Yeah, they've uh, got to give credit to that offensive line. They've really matured and had a great start to this season. Young under center. He'll hand a Smith opening play. Finds room to the right side. He's up the sideline. Ten, five, touchdown, Eagles. One play, one touchdown for this Eagles offense. And you were right on the money there when you said their first drive has been pretty successful. I don't know if you can get more successful than that. That was uh, – <laughs> Again, Smith lined up in that left slot, little uh, counter action play, and not a very good job defensively, containment wise, by the Warriors. And he broke it to the outside, and a quick 35 yards for Luke Smith, and the Eagles are on the board. Awaiting the PAT from Pfeiffer, 10:53 left to go in the opening quarter, and that that kick is blocked. It's going to remain six nothing. Eagles lead. Yeah, as you said earlier, Jack, the in the kicking game, there's three main parts. You got to center the football, you got to put it down, and then kick it. That time, it looked like the snap was a little high, and when he got to the football, I don't, I'm not sure if the ball was placed the way it needed to be. And good pressure that time by the Warriors front line there defensively to got their hands up and block the extra point. If this Eagles offense can keep running the ball like, like they just did right there, good blocking up front. It's going to be a long night for the Warriors. Yeah, we said to it early on we thought keys would be to sustain drives and move the chains. So you don't have to move the chains when you run for 35 <laughs> yards. Nice job again, though. Luke Smith, I think uh, I might have been able to run through that hole. I mean, that was a great job of blocking, and, and Luke did a nice job of getting to the outside and then cut it back for that 35-yard touchdown run. That's good for Smith's ninth touchdown of the season. And that'll help his average, too. Coming into the game, he's averaging eight yards per carry. That one for 35 will definitely help that eight-yard average, which yeah. is outstanding in itself. Yeah, that's, that's not bad at all. I mean, last week, six carries, 102 yards, and two touchdowns. Here's Pfeiffer lining up to kick. A little bit of deja vu. He kicked just a minute, seven seconds ago. Looking at our roster here, Edgewood's got number 34 back, and they don't have a 34 on their roster. So I'm not sure who that is, but he's going to be the one that's going to receive the kick. And he'll be taken down around the 25. 
Good coverage again on special teams by the Eagles. Yeah, number 23, Logan Queen, again on the tackle. He's been very active tonight. And again, nice job by the Eagles containing the return. And it looks like the Warriors are going to start about the 27-yard line. All season, uh, the special teams coached by Jason Corlew has been phenomenal. They've forced six fumbles on special teams, and they've, they've swarmed the ball like we saw there. Hall hands it to Lucas right there. Good for a gain of about six. And that's, I think, what Edge was going to have to do. If you're going to put pressure on the quarterback, you got to come in, up with a – get the ground game established a little bit, keep that defense a little bit at home a little bit at that time. A nice run. Looks like he gained about six yards. Here's – Hall hands to Lucas again. He'll pick up about two. It'll be third and a long two. A bunch formation here for the Warriors. Hall hands to Lucas once more. Spinning, trying for the first down. Pyle looked like he got it, and they're going to call him short. It'll be fourth and inches. Took a gang of a uh, host of Eagles tacklers to bring him down. He kept those legs pumping and churning, and it's going to be fourth, and it looks about like about one. And the one thing with when you have your quarterback, Tony Hall is a quarterback, and the punter, you never know if you could see a, a fake here or a quick kick. The Eagles aren't playing for a kick. Uh, Luke's uh, Smith is about – only about 15 yards back from now, he's dropping back a little bit farther. And Hall's going to punt this one away. Smith under that one, calls for the fair catch. Eagles take over at around their own 40. Nice job, Luke Smith, and it was a nice high kick by Tony Hall of the Warriors, and Smith did a nice job at that time just making the right decision, calling for the fair catch, and Eagles again going to start in pretty good field position. This time, though, and uh, on the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back defensive stops, three and outs right there. That's key. I mean, when you can do that and put your office, uh, offense on the field, um, it's definitely going the Eagles' way. Young will take this one under center. Hands to Deemer on a sweep. Got room to the left side. Beats the safety. He's got room up the sideline. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Eagles. Two offensive plays on the night and two touchdowns for the Eagles. Yeah, Both wing backs much, are involved. Very similar plays, really, except this time it, it went to Deemer instead of Smith, but uh, and they went ran the opposite way. Deemer was in the right slot, right wing slot, and ran that little counteraction play to the left side and 60-yard uh, touchdown. This is a pretty good offensive average so far. Yeah, not bad. Averaging 50 yards a play, right? That's exactly right. I'm retired now, Jack. I can't do math that quick. <laughs> 8.56 left to go in the opening quarter. Pfeiffer, good this time with the extra point. 13 zilch, Eagles lead. Yeah, that was everything was well done there. Snap got back there quicker, but wasn't as high. And Smith got it down quick and... As you said, I've been real impressed with this uh, Owen Pfeiffer. He looks like he can. Do you know how long he can kick a field goal? There, I have not. I was not at the practice, but there are rumors that he drilled one from 50. That's so pretty good. Quite a leg for a junior in high school. Pfeiffer is a soccer player converted kicker. He runs cross country in the fall as well and track in the spring. Nowadays you see most kickers are have some kind of soccer background, that soccer style. This is going to be a key offensive possession here for the Warriors. They want to stay in this football game. They got to, they've not been able to get a first down. Yet. Yep. They like to throw, you said earlier, too, they like to throw the football. We'll see if they try to open it up. They did in their first possession was very unsuccessful because of the Eagles' pressure. 
they went to the run game. The last possession just came up short, had the fourth and one, and punted it away. And again, they've got to sustain some kind of drive here. This is going to be a long night for the Warriors. Yeah, this this Eagles defense. I talked to coaches, players. Their goal is to apply as much pressure as possible, especially on Edgewood's right side of the line. They feel like that's their weakest point, and that side for the Eagles is their strongest point. Looks like we got a player down here. Not sure who it is. Looks like the senior, Will Mook. Hate to see that in a high school game, Coach. Yeah, especially senior year and hopefully he's going to be okay it looks like it might be i can't really tell the trainers out there talking to him but he's got his helmet off we're hoping it's just a cramp that or maybe uh got his wind knocked out of him a little bit kind of holding his stomach there maybe that's he's at well a good sign. He's up walking off on his own power, which is always good to see. 100% Will Mook. He is second on the team in interceptions. He has a pair behind Giovanni Rice, the junior. He has three. Quarterback Young is subbing in at corner for Will Mook. Edge would line up in twins this time. They throw the ball 84% of the time when they're lined up in twins. That being two receivers on either side of the football. Hall drops back. Pump fake. Throw downfield. He's got a man. That ball is knocked away, and they're going to call pass interference on the junior, Luke Smith. And I think the coverage was pretty good. I think if he would have turned his head and looked back at the football, it might not, he might not have been called for that interference call. But as you called, the pump fake, it was kind of the old – uh, give it or uh, post and go type route and uh, he got behind Smith. Smith did a nice job of recovering and got his hands up late to knock it away but I think because he didn't turn his head is why the official threw the flag. Yeah, it looked like he moves a couple DBs linebackers with that uh, shoulder twitch as well. 841 left to go in the opening quarter. Hall back to pass again. Finds number five Hunter Brott over the middle. And Hunter Brott was inside receiver on the left side of the Edgewood uh, formation. Just did a quick slant right over the middle. Nice job that time by Tony Hall finding him wide open. Kind of sat in that zone area and just found a wide open receiver. Warriors at the Eagle 46. Hall back to pass. Fires. That pass is complete. That's Cunningham. Makes a move. It's plenty of yards. He's down to about the 20-yard line. Yeah, nice job again. You notice that Edge was going to the quick. That was the last two throws have been quick. Uh, as soon as Tony Hall gets the ball, he's looking to throw it. And, uh, again, that time, great job by the Warriors of yardage after the catch. We're going to have the ball first and 10 on the 21-yard line. Hold the pass again. Nearly intercepted. That was Rice. It was Warriors offense. Once they get the ball moving, they don't huddle. They run a hurry-up offense, similar to Lakeside's offense that we saw earlier this year. They keep the clock rolling. They keep the defense, try to keep the defense on their heels the whole time. Now when you do this, no huddles, quick stuff too. You can't make substitutions if you want to get a different look defensively as well. It keeps the defense kind of stationary on the field. Hand to Lucas. Just past the line of scrimmage. They're going to call it second and nine. Third and nine, excuse me. Looked like that might have been a, a run pass option there. He decided to give it to Lucas, and he only got maybe a half a yard. Hall in the shotgun. Lucas to his left. Back to throw again. Eagles pressure nearly gets to him. That was Queen. And Halsey's going to have to throw this one away. Yeah, he had no choice there. They lined up with trips on the right side, and they kind of almost ran a pick play. One receiver went to the outside. One receiver went to the inside. 
Good job by the Eagle defense. Covered it up and Hall had nowhere to throw it. Got a little pressure, rolled out of the pocket, and basically threw the football away. Warriors lining up in trips on the left side now on the bottom of your screen. 7.26 left to go in the opening quarter. Fourth and nine. Hall back to pass. Pressure's there. Checks down to Lucas. And he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good open field tackle by Kenny Pavelson. Eagles take over around the 23-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice job defensively that time because if you could tell the Eagles are fundamentally sound. They stayed home. They had pressure on the quarterback, and everybody in the secondary line, the linebackers, stayed in their lanes and didn't lose sight of anybody. And because of that and that pressure that was put on Hall, great job by the Eagle defense, and they're going to get the football back. How many plays is it going to take him to score? It's kind of like that old commercial. <laughs> How many licks of a tootsie roll does it take? How many plays is it going to score to get a touchdown? Uh, for this Remember more, that commercial? That's, I uh, do. That's probably past your you – know, No, no. no I, hey, that's a classic. If you don't know that commercial, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've ever watched TV. That's, I, I think it's still on today, no? Yeah, I think I saw it the other day <laughs> before I left for the golf course. Yeah? What, what did you tell me your handicap was? Bad. Bad? No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Eagles running their third offensive play of the night. Young back to pass, tries to get around a corner. He's going to take one. He's going to be down behind the line of scrimmage by Seth Enos around the 20. Yeah, Enos did a nice job putting pressure on the quarterback. It looked like number 16 for the Eagles was running uh, Luke Barbo. The tight end position was ran a little out pattern, got behind the defender. If uh, Young would have had a little bit more time to set his feet, I think he might have had a touchdown on that play there because Luke Barbo got behind the defender. Running clock, 6.44 left to go. 13 nothing. your Geneva Eagles lead. This time Young in the shotgun. Wilson to his right. He's going to hand to Smith on the sweep. Find a hole outside. He'll get back to around the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and about nine. Again, first time the Eagles have been in a third down situation all night. Smith got to the outside. Got a pretty good pickup there after that loss on the previous down. So we'll see if the Eagles, again, we talked about moving the chains. They really haven't had to because they've had two quick scores, but this would be a nice third down conversion. Yeah, I'd assume they'd run the ball here. I mean, it's worked, it's worked so far. Young, back to pass, swings to his right, cross body, Finds Deemer. He's got room up the sideline near the 50. Big first down for this Eagles offense. Young slung that one to Deemer. Good for a 40-yard gain. Tell you what, that's a difficult throw for uh, any quarterback but rolling to when you're right-handed, rolling to your left. And he had some kind of pressure. Looked like he might have got banged up a little bit there. He got up and kind of slow, but he is back in the huddle. But when you're pressure like that, didn't have time to set his feet, made a great throw. And I believe it was Deemer was the receiver, made it went up, got, made a great catch, first down Eagles. Six minutes left to go in the first quarter. Young hands to Wilson right up the gut this time. And he's driven back to the line of scrimmage, but forward progress is going to give him a gain of about three. Yeah, Luke Wilson on the year, averaging four yards a carry, three touchdowns, has 310 yards. He's kind of their inside runner, and you need to have that kind of guy because of – all the counteraction that they have, you have to keep the defense honest with that run up the middle once in a while, and, and Wilson's had a pretty good senior year. Wilson's also the goal line guy. When it's If they're not <laughs> sneaking one in with Young, they're punching it in with Wilson. 5-18 left in the first quarter. Young in the shotgun. That's Rice looking for Rice downfield. That ball's caught. What a pitch and catch from Young and Rice. Gianni Rice just basically ran a fly pattern down the right sideline, and nice job that time by Young. And uh, Edgewood's calling a timeout here, but, yeah, Rice just basically beat the defender, and uh, Young did a nice job of throwing it up and let Rice run underneath it. The Eagles are going to have first down, but the 15-yard line looks like they spotted it. A huge pass play, moved the chains. 
really show the Warriors' defense that they can throw the ball. Uh, that, and that would be lead to some success later on in the year as Young struggled a little bit this year, 14 to 42 coming into the game, only 33%, but has made some great throws tonight. And it's, if you can get that run pass going there, they're going to be harder to defend, and that's a good sign for the Eagles. Yeah, like you said, he had a slow start. He, I th This is his first year playing varsity quarterback. As you know, Wyatt Fuderick, he was the quarterback last year, graduated, of course. Young, I think the, the game has slowed down a lot for him, and he can really make his reads more effectively rather than – Maybe first couple games he'd, he'd get nervous, doesn't know who to throw to, didn't have a ton of time in the pocket. Now he knows his inner clock. He knows where his receivers are going to be. He's got more self-confidence. He's making big plays. Looks like it's going to be the pitch play to Smith. And that's a rollout and nearly caught by Logan Queen. I tell you what, that was a great play design. I think everybody on the Edgewood sideline, Thought they were going to run the football. Great job that time by Young. And if you're going to be a good quarterback at any level, you got to be able to. But I I call it ball handling. You know, ball fakes, uh, play action, and they, they he set that play up great. Just kind of overthrew the receiver. It was a good route by Queen. Had the block and release. He was wide open. Just just overthrown. Young hands to Smith, and he's boomed. Looks like he got about five. Nice job that time by Luke Smith after he gained about three or four extra yards after the initial hit, and that's important for a running back yards after that initial hit, and he did a nice job bouncing out and getting to the outside and got five yards on that play. Third and six from the Warrior 11. 428 left to go in the first quarter. Young hands to Wilson. Did he get the first down? Might be about a half a yard short the way they're marking it. I'm sure the Eagles are going to go for it here. I mean, running the ball's been working all night. Ground and pound. That's, that's their game with the wing T offense. Fourth and one from the sixth. Young hands to Wilson right up the middle. Pyle looks like he's going to push him for a first down. It looks like they got it in marked inside the five, and I think that's going to be enough for a first down. Three forty-five left to go in the opening quarter. Eagles have it first and goal from the four. This is typically where they give the ball to Wilson, let him punch it in himself. But they just gave it to him two plays in a row. Young's going to keep it. Try to get to the corner. Dives. He Touchdown, Eagles. A nice little fake to uh, the, uh, the fullback, Wilson. And then he kept it and basically just ran a quarterback keeper on the outside, as you said, tried to get to the corner and did. So nice drive again by the Eagles. A couple big plays, pass plays that helped with that drive. 19-0 Eagles lead awaiting the PAT. 3.22 left to go in the opening quarter. Queen the snapper. And it looked like somebody jumped on the Eagles side. Yep, that's going to be a false start on the Eagles. They're going to be back five yards. So we'll try it again. Part two. Pfeiffer to kick. Smith the holder. Snaps good. Kick. Off the right pole. They're going to say it's good. Must have went off on the inside. right down the middle in the books. 20-0 Eagles lead. 3.22 left to go in the opening quarter. This Warriors offense trying to get something in motion. Yeah, I'd say it's, uh, they're, they got their backs up against the wall early on here, down 20 to nothing. And 
as you said, Jack, they need to sustain a drive, get some some kind of points on the board. Or the way the Eagles' offense is moving tonight, they're going to have trouble staying in this game. And I believe it has second half. If it's thirty points, and we have a running clock, is that still? I believe it's thirty-five. But yeah, thirty-five now. Okay. It looked like the Warriors had a promising drive uh, coming together on their previous possession. They had a couple big passing plays, got a big pass interference, and then ran the ball a couple times, got stuffed, and then they they were forced to pass on fourth and what was it, 18? Right. And give the Eagles defense credit after that pass interference call. Gave the Warriors a ball basically, I think it was at midfield, and the Eagle defense shut them down and got the ball back. Pfeiffer lining up to kick for the fourth time in the quarter. It's a good one. That's Cunningham to receive. Makes a move, and he's tripped up around the 30-yard line. Yeah, about a 15-yard return, and again, nice job by the Eagle defense kicking team. And the edge was going to start, as you said. Looks like about the 30-yard line, so... This is a key. It's early in the game. We're still in the first quarter, but this is a key drive for Edgewood if they want to stay in this football game. It seems like from now on, the Warriors are going to have to put up points of some sort, whether it's a chip shot field goal or a touchdown. Hall fakes the handoff to his running back and hands that. He's stuffed at the line by Wilson. Yeah, a little counteraction play there. They faked a wide pitch and had the uh, the slot man come inside handoff and nice job again by the Eagle defenses. They stayed home and stayed in their lanes and shut that play down. No gain. 2.50 to go in the opening quarter. Hall on the shotgun. Throwing. Backside of the field. And that's a drop. That's that, a big drop right there. That was a nothing but open field right, ahead of him. That was a well set up screen play. They brought the pressure. Three Eagles putting pressure on Hall and did a nice job of, and patience and got the ball to the receiver. He just couldn't hang on to it. But as you said, that might have been for some big yardage here. Well designed, designed play there by the Warriors. Hall has two receivers to his left and two to his right. That's twins. Hall out to the right side, throws downfield, and that's another drop. It was Jeremy Goble. In and out of the hands. Fourth and ten, another three and out for this Warriors offense. And number three, Matt Wright, I believe, was the guy that got a hand in that play, too, and knocked it away. So, good defensive play, play by the Eagles to get a hand on that ball. Fourth and ten from their own 30. You'd assume the Warriors are punting despite lining up with a real play. Real set, excuse me. And Hall kicks this one straight up. Just make About sure it doesn't yards. hit anybody. That ball's going to sit on the Eagle 49. So good job again by the defense three and out. They're going to have the football at midfield. 2.24 to go in this first quarter. And this Eagles offense hoping to keep the chains rolling, chains moving. Got a ton of traction right now. They scored on every drive so far. That's three drives. Been, been ground and pound all night besides the two passing plays. They've been killing the Warriors up front. Yeah, two big plays on the first two drives, a 35-yard touchdown run and a 60-yard touchdown run. The last time was more of a sustained drive. And here's the halfback pass. Rice upfield just over the hands of Smith. Yeah, Rice just didn't need, needed to set himself. He got that pitch and rolled out to the right. And you're going to throw the football high if you don't set your feet. And it's exactly he kind of faded on that throw, and the ball sailed on him and over the head of Smith. He did, and watching Smith on that play did a nice little – he had the defender beat and a nice little post pattern, and uh, he had the, the, the defender beat. Unsuccessful try, flip into the back of the playbook for that one. That, that was a su successful against Lakeside. Had a big game, led to a touchdown. 
There's a hand to Deemer up the middle. He's got plenty of space. Makes a move to his left. 10, 5, makes a move. Touchdown, Eagles. 26 0. Good for Deemer's second of the night. It's that inside counter action they scored the first two times on. And again, right now, Edgewood's got to find a way to defend that play because they've been unable to stop that tonight. A big, huge hole on that left side of the line. And Deemer did a nice job of cutting it outside. And then when he saw he had an inside route to the end zone, made a nice, another nice cutback. That play good for a 50-yard touchdown. Deemer has two carries and 110 yards. <coughs> Pfeiffer with the kick. On the money, 27-0 Eagles lead. Great first quarter for the Eagles, both offensively and defensively, but again, three huge plays. A 35-yard touchdown run, a 50-yard touchdown run, and then previous to that, they had that 60-yard touchdown run. One Only one really sustained drive, but hey, when you can score, you score, right? Right. Now, if you're the Warriors, Coach, do you try something different, run the ball a little bit more, or do you, do you have to pass because they're down – by 27 in the opening quarter. Yeah, I think you got to. I think you got to mix it up a little bit. I think the last call they had on the uh, previous drive when they had that screen play, I thought that was well set up to just the young man drop the football. I think if he catches that, they might still have the football. But um, right now, the uh, the Eagles are con definitely controlling the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. And it looks to me like Edgewood right now has no answers. All week, I've, I, you know, I've, I'm in class with a lot of these guys. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of these guys, the coaches all week. They, they were telling me, hey, game plan, chop the wood, chop chop up Edgewood. And they've been doing that so far. Yeah, great job by both. And except for the missed extra point, everything else has been well done too. They, they have, the Eagles have been had to punt, but their kick kickoff team's been excellent. Uh, and it, both offensive and defenses has basically controlled this football game, as we can tell by the score, 27 nothing with 2.04 to go in the first quarter. And they're going to call this one back. The Eagles might have been offsides. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to be. So Pfeiffer's going to kick this one five yards back. Could be big for the Warriors. Could give them some better field position, get something moving. Here on homecoming night, if you're just tuning in, Eagles lead 27 to nothing over the Edgewood Warriors. Beautiful night, though a chilly one. Still beautiful, clear skies, no rain. That's, all, that's about all you can ask for, right, Coach? It's a great night for – it's hard to believe it's a – End of September already. Tomorrow's October 1st. Did you guys have a great week of school with Spirit Week and oh, the homecoming? Absolutely. Spirit Week, always always great, entertaining. That ball's muffed. And Cunningham's going to jump on that one. He is walloped around the 20. It's like number 59. Is that uh, it was Maddie Van Sickle with the hit? Good play there. One fifty nine left to go in the opening quarter. Hall back to pass. Fires into the flat. Now was that off his hands or was that deflected, Coach? Uh, I think Matt Hoover, the linebacker. Or uh, outside linebacker got his hand on it and knocked it down. Again, you can see what Edgewood's trying to do. They're trying to get, throw quick screen passes, wide receiver screens, try to get something, some of these receivers in some open fields, an open field to make some plays. And right now they're just struggling. Hall back to pass again, firing down the other side of the field. That pass intended for Cunningham, no good. Yeah, just not a real one. I mean, had a lot of zip on the football, but. Uh, the receiver, number three, Cunningham, was running an inside post route, and he threw it to his outside shoulder, had no chance to turn and make the catch. 
again, I had a little bit of heat on them. That makes a difference when you're a quarterback to get that ball on target when you got someone in your face. Cunningham listed at 6'2", 180. He's Hall's primary target. Hall back to pass again. Surveys tries to get out. Dances around in the pocket. Fires on the run. Pass is caught. That was Hunt coming back near the first down. And he did a nice job that time as uh, Hall was in trouble. He, the receiver came back to catch the football. Uh, tried to find the open area in the zone. Good Again, good pressure by the Eagles, but it's going to be a first down for the Warriors, and I believe that is it, that their first first down. I believe it has to be close, it was second or third. Bunch set. Hall's going to keep that himself on a quick pass. No good. And we got uh, a flag down here. Looks to me like they might have had an ineligible man downfield. That offensive line released a little early on that screen pass, and when that line of that official that's on the line of scrimmage throws a flag, that usually would would means, and that's I think what they called. And that's all a timing play when the the linemen are counting in their heads, one thousand one, one thousand two, and releasing. And I think Hall just held on to the football too long. Yeah, that that formation. When they line up in Rhino Max is what that's called, or Max Rhino, excuse me. They run the ball 91% of the time. Would have caught the Eagles defense off guard. Hall back to pass again. Receivers on both sides. Fires downfield into double coverage. Cunningham comes away with that one. Big play there. Gets down to the Eagle 20. Again, just uh, all, all just threw it up. Had two defenders there, and... Uh, it looks like we have another penalty flag down on the way back in the other end. So it's long pass play is going to go for not here as the Warriors are going to be penalized again. It's usually in the holding area. We'll see what happens here. We haven't seen a signal yet from the officials. I think that might be what it is. Every Nobody's working up here. They're all going backwards. What could have been a highlight play for Cunningham called back due to an offensive hold. Yep, that's exactly what it was, holding. It's going to be first and 25. I think Cunningham might have got away with a little push off there too. I'm not sure, but he looked with the two Eagle defenders went up. He looked like he had his hands out a little bit stretched there, pushing off. Hall back to pass. Oh, and he's going to be taken down. Is that ball out? It They're going to call that pass incomplete. Or are they going to downhaul? I believe that was Bryce Pete. Was that number five in on the linebacker blitz and did a nice job? He made it, it came an inside route. It was wide open for him. I can't believe they didn't wouldn't call that intentional grounding. I, I think they said Hall was down, so they're going to put the Warriors down at the one yard line, second and forty four. I don't think I've seen second and forty four since maybe the own sixteen Browns. One and 31 Browns. <laughs> Hall's going to keep it himself around the outside. And did they get him for a safety? Nope. The officials haven't marked it yet. Nope, they're just marking third down. But, boy, it looked like he just barely got outside of that end zone. He did a nice job, though. He was being tackled, and what you want to do is make sure you take care of the football. He had both arms wrapped around that ball to make sure he didn't cough it up. But it's third and 44. Clock winds down to 23 seconds left in the opening quarter. The sack on first down, that was Bryce Pete, like you said, and Kenny Pavelson was in there, too. Hall trying to avoid the safety. Fires across the field on a screen. And they're going to take him down around the one-yard line. It's, yeah, is that Rice that made the tackle? 25. They're down in that opposite end. Uh, these old eyes can't see down that far, but I think that's who it was. Or is it 35? Yeah, that was Rice uh, making yeah. the big play on Hunt. I'll tell you what, great job open field tackling there. He was in great position and uh, did a nice job there. And it's the first quarter ends. The Eagles up 27 nothing. 
Couldn't ask for a better first quarter of football if you're head coach Don Chimsky. Uh, he's got to be extremely pleased, as we said, in all facets of the game. Offense, defense, special teams. Only miscue all night has been the missed extra point. But other than that, I'm real impressed with the pursuit and quickness of the football this team defense has. They've done a nice job tonight, uh, as you said earlier, with the Edgewood spreading the field with their four wides and trying to throw it around the ballpark a little bit. Eagles have done a nice job of staying home, containing in their lanes, and they do a nice job of breaking down and making solid tackles too, which sometimes is difficult to do in the open field. They're hitting hard tonight as well. You know, Bryce Pete, he missed last week with a bone bruise in his ribs. He's back this week wearing the flak jacket. The defense shifted around a little bit. Now they're back to normal, ready to go. It's going to be fourth and 44 when we start this second quarter. The ball is spotted on the one-yard line. If you're the Warriors, you just got to hope you get this punt off quick. Your special teams coach, Jake Orlew, do you go in for the block? I don't think so. You don't want to get a, a, a roughing the kicker and give him a first down. You're going to get great positions right now. What's that? Luke Smith back there. He's on the 28-yard line, so they're going to get the football in great field position here. Just hold on to the football. Don't make any mistakes. Man, it's going to even be better than that. Ball is going to be going out of bounds. At about the 23-yard line is where they're going to spot it. If my eyes, yep, right there in the 23. So with that, again, the Eagles great field position for the Eagles. With that, the Eagles take over with 11:53 left to go in the half, up 27 nothing. Offense is perfect, four of four, scoring touchdowns this night tonight. Hoping to make that a fifth touchdown, and we're still in the beginning of the second quarter. Calling the timeout. That's their second timeout already. I'm not sure why he would call timeout there unless he didn't have the right personnel in the field. We'll see what he comes up with here. But again, as you said, the Eagles offense has been pretty dynamic tonight. Quick scoring, one long drive, but the other touchdowns have been on quick scores and Anytime you have long runs, and we can see sitting up here, the, the line of scrimmage, the holes are huge. So that offensive line, tight ends, got to give them a lot of credit for a great job of blocking here in this first half. Yep, Eagles offensive line has done a great job up front all night. The offensive line led by homecoming king Johnny Hazler at left guard. Congratulations, Mr. Hazler. Congratulations to you being on the court. Thank you. Hazler, he's a team captain. Um, everybody looks up to him on this football team. He's clearly a leader. And this Eagles offensive line has been phenomenal this season. And, and that's a lot in thanks to him. He's been he's the oldest uh, player on the line, most seasoned. You need good leadership, and Mr. Hazler has provided that for the Eagles. There's Wilson up the middle, running behind Hazler, actually. Be second and about five from the Warrior 18. Both teams coming in tonight, two and one in the CVC. So this is a big CVC matchup tonight. Right now, the Eagles are dominating. Young on the end around. That's that's Smith gets the first down down to the 10 yard line. Little misdirection play there as they handed it to the right slot back. And Smith coming from the left side, got the inside handoff. Looked like he bobbled it a little bit, but did a nice job of maintaining control and got enough for a first down. It's going to be first and goal from the 10 yard line for the Eagles. Clockwise down to 11 minutes in the second quarter. Eagles have it at the 11 yard line. Hand to Wilson. He's bottled up around the eight-yard line. 
It looks like you got a couple. He gets that momentum going forward. He's not an easy guy to bring down. Absolutely not. If you're just tuning in, 27-0 Eagles lead here on homecoming night against the Edgewood Warriors. 10-22 left to go in the first half. Hand to Deemer there, looking for his third touchdown. Gets in for the score. It was a, almost like a jet sweep look on that play there. And as you said, Deemer kind of tight roped the sideline and got his feet inside the pylon there for another Eagle touchdown. Deemer's got a hat trick, and it's the beginning of the second quarter. Eagles 33, Warriors 0. Pfeiffer lining up for the extra point. He's 3 of 4 on the night. His first attempt, you know, it was blocked. Smith the holder. Kick is up, and it is good. 34-0 Eagles lead here on homecoming night. Joining me tonight is special guest, Mr. Brad Ellis. Thanks for joining me, Coach. Uh, I'm glad to be here. It's nice to see a football game. I haven't been to one all year, so it's a great night for it's homecoming, and it's a great night for these Eagles as they lead 34 to nothing. They're fun to watch. This offense full of electric backs. A lot of young guys, too, right? They only have a few seniors that are playing, and so things look bright for the future of Eagle football. Yeah, like you said, not a lot of seniors, only five seniors on the team. This team is led by the junior class. They're loaded. The sophomores, all their main guys are very good. As you see, Deemer, he's got well over 100 yards and three touchdowns. But you mentioned Johnny Hazler being the senior leader on that offensive line, and that's been the key tonight coming into this game is how they've dominated. And you got to have seniors step up, and it looks like this senior group, even though there's a small group of them, have done a nice job of leading this young Eagle team into a 4-2 and two start on the year and dominating this first half. Pfeiffer lines up to kick. 10-14 left to go in the first half. The Eagles lead by a score of 34 to nothing. Looks like some personnel issues on Edgewood's side. Head coach Aljuan Cooper not happy with his squad. I think that's why he called timeout earlier. In that just that last possession, as it looked like his defense didn't have the right personnel in. Back to receive is Cunningham, number three. And a little squib kick from Pfeiffer, fielded by Hunt. He's nearly tripped up, keeps his feet moving. Good way to keep the momentum mo going. Warriors take over at their own 40. Yeah, Hunt did a nice job that time. Looked like he was stumbling a little bit. Got his hand down to kind of gain, maintain his uh, composure and his position and stood up and gained an extra six or seven yards. So best field position for the night. For the Warriors, it looks like they're going to start on the 38-yard line is where they got the ball spotted, maybe 39. Good starting field position for the Warriors. Their first time really getting a good spot on after a kickoff. Here's Hall back to pass. Fires to the check down. They're going to say that one's incomplete. Pass hey. intended for Cunningham. Yeah, he looked real quick over to Anthony Hunt, who was right, kind of faked a wide receiver screen to him, threw back left, but unfortunately threw the ball low. And the receiver, if he did catch it, he would have been down immediately because his knee would have hit. Although his team is down 34 points, Hall's done a good job with his ball fakes tonight. Looks downfield plenty of time. Fires the deep ball. That ball's caught. That's Cunningham down to the 10-yard line. Yeah, I think they're calling it out of bounds. Official down at that end. Signaled no catch out of bounds. So, again, a great hookup there by the Warriors, unfortunately. Not in bounds, so the ball's going to be brought back. It's going to be third down and 10. 9.30 to go in this first quarter. 
That, that's two big, big passing plays for the Warriors that have been called back. The other one on a holding, this one on uh, the receiver just catching it out of bounds. Lucas in the backfield with Hall. Both juniors. Hall drops back. Looking to his left. Pass is complete. That's Hunt. Makes a move over the middle. Good for a first down. Yeah, nice again, that quick pitch and catch. Uh-oh, we got a little altercation going on here. Flags flying. I'm not sure what. Yeah, there are flags all over the place. Scuffle there near the end of that play. And one young man doesn't want to quit. He still wants to go at it. It takes three guys to pull him off, but let's see what's going on here. As the Eagles, all you can do is hope for offsetting penalties. I didn't see what happened, too. It was a quick pass to the middle, and the receiver looked like the receiver maybe lost his helmet and then that's the young man that I couldn't tell what number it was but he was not he was the one that was so the referees are sitting here at midfield discussing it see what the call is yep offsetting penalties I think it's going to be first and ten about midfield for the Warriors Yep. I'm surprised they didn't call a second penalty on the Warrior player that kept coming at people. They took four or five guys after the flags were thrown. He was still attacking or trying to attack, and usually you get another flag thrown in there, but it didn't it, happen. They called offsetting penalties. You never want to see stuff like that in a high school game, especially two local teams. These guys know each other. I, I know a handful of guys on the Edgewood team. Y you never want to see that in a high school game. There's no, there's no room for that. Keep your composure. Ref still, still discussing this play. I'm not sure if they, they've got the. Looks like they have the ball spotted on the 48, but the chains or the first down marker hasn't moved, so I'm not sure what the discussion is or what they're not sure where to spot the football now they're moving it back to the 50. after the offsetting penalties with this uh due to the scuffle that near midfield they gave the a, gave him a first down too so on that play so there'll be a first and ten at midfield here after the they're gonna wind the clock and get things rolling here. Nine eighteen left to go in the half. Hall hands that one on a keeps it himself, excuse me. Gets to the outside. And he's a run out of bounds for a gain of about seven. A little old fashioned look like a bootleg there, kind of faked the inside handoff to the slot back and he kept it and went to, uh, ran along the left hand side there. Looks like he got Spot the ball. Looks like he got about uh, eight, almost eight yards. It's going to be second and long two. This time a bunch formation for the Warriors. Hall back to pass. Flicks his shoulders. That pass is complete near the sideline. That's number five, Hunter Brott. It was number 16 for the Eagles. Luke Barbo on coverage had a nice job of coverage there, but um, Hall did a nice job of throwing the ball away from the defense at that time, and nice pitch and catch for another, well, it looks like third down and short. They went with a quick snap, and I don't think they were set. Now we got another flag. It looked like a a fumble, and then on the backside with nothing happening. It looked like Mook came around and smoked one of the Edgewood receivers. And we have a midfield discussion again by the officials. Warriors 
Packers putting together a little bit of a drive here. The most successful drive they've had all year is they're trailing 34 to nothing with 8.35 to go in the half. But a little stall in the game here was as if the officials discussed the flags. They're going to say offsetting penalties again. Getting a bit chippy here at the Spire Institute. 8.35 left to go in the first half. Eagles lead by a score of 34 to nothing. It'll be third and one from the Eagle 42. Well, I think what they did is look like they marked a five-yard penalty off on Edgewood and then marked a 15 off on a personal foul on, the, on Geneva. So it's going to give them first down on the 30-yard line. Hall on the shotgun once more with two receivers on both sides of the line of scrimmage. You got two men in motion. There's got to be a penalty there. Can't have two guys moving. No flag there. Not sure what happened. And Edge was going to burn their last time out of the half. 8 yeah, 16 remaining. got away with one there because you can't have two guys in motion at the same time. I think, I I think that was why they called the timeout. I think I think the officials must uh, – I don't know. I'm not going to say anything about officials. <laughs> Homecoming game here at the Spire. Eagles up 34 nothing on the visiting Edgewood Warriors. Beautiful night, Coach, but a cold one. It's getting a little chilly, but it's nice here in the booth. Still been able to wear sport some shorts tonight. Yeah, those are golfing shorts. Got the purple shorts. I like them. Yeah. They get a lot of use. <laughs> in the in the hallways when I pass you at school and like in the last few years, I, I've seen pants that color. I haven't seen shorts though. You're not allowed to wear shorts at school. They're, exactly. D did you buy them together? Did you get? To get them separate because you like the pants so much. Oh, you got to get a deal. Got to look for <laughs> deals. <laughs> That's Hall throwing. And he's. The receiver there is stuffed. Bryce Pete on the tackle. Nice job there. Receiver caught the ball, had nowhere to go with it as Bryce Pete was right on top of him, made the tackle. Only looks like they marked about a half a yard, is all they got on that. So it's going to be second and about nine. Long nine. Pete playing inside linebacker. He's a freshman. For a freshman, he's huge. He's 5'10", 190, and the kid's 15. Doesn't even have his temporary license yet. Let's hope he drives better than Miles Garrett. <laughs> That's Hall checking down to Lucas. Lucas gets around the corner. Nice job of contained by the Eagle defense there. Didn't let him get outside. It's going to be a long third, well, about third and six, it looks like. We mentioned it a handful of times earlier. This Warriors team, they pass the ball significantly more than they run the ball. As there's Hall back to pass again. Looking, he's got plenty of time. That ball is a little bit high for number three, Cunningham. They had three receivers over in there. Inside receiver ran a quick slant. One of the receivers ran a little deeper route, and then the, an outside route is who he was trying to throw. I think it was to Cunningham and overthrew him. It's a big play here. It's going to be fourth down, a manageable six for the Warriors. See if they can get another first down and keep this drive alive. Try to put some points on before we go in at halftime. Hall in the shotgun. Lucas to his right. Trying to get the Eagles to jump off sides on fourth and six. The Eagles defense done a good job all night throwing some different looks. They've rushed four, they've rushed five, even six. And they've thrown some cover three, cover four. They've done a good job mixing up their defense. High snap to Hall. Snagged with one hand. Thrown. That's incomplete over the middle. Pass intended for Cunningham. Eagles take over on the 27-yard line. You got to make that catch. That was a pretty well-designed play. Had... Cunningham coming on the inside route there, and the quarterback, uh, Tony Hall, did a nice job finding him. He was open, would have had the first down, but it's one of those situations 
where I think he wanted to run with the football before he caught it and kind of turned his head upfield. And unfortunately for the Warriors, they're going to turn it over. And Downs Eagles are going to take over with 7.05 to go in this first half. If you're just tuning in, the Eagles take over around the 27-yard line after a turnover on Downs. 34-0, they lead over the Edgewood Warriors here on homecoming night. There's a screen right there to Geo Rice. Yeah, well, as you said, Jack, a wide receiver screen set up. Rice did a nice job of catching the football and turned it up. Got a couple. Looks like he got about four. After discussion with head coach Don Jimsky, he said the screenplay is one they want to run a lot more than they do, which is really, that's the first time I've seen them run it all season. It's just not a play they really like. That's Smith on the carry. Deemer, excuse me. Again, he started in that right slot inside handoff, went off left tackle. Good job again by the Eagles offensive line. Moves the chains first down. I think that's kind of what Coach Shimsky wants to do here too. Just let's get a nice long sustained drive, hold the ball till the end of the quarter and go in at halftime. Up, well, if they score, it'd be 41 to nothing. They lead 34 nothing now. Yeah, you'd hope to grind the clock out, but the way this offense has been, you never know if they'll snap one off. Young with the quick hand to Wilson. Jacob Wilson doing a nice job there, making sure he's got both hands wrapped around that football. You don't want to turn it over now. <laughs> the tight end queen checking into the game. 5.42 left to go in the first half. 34 nothing. your Geneva Eagles lead. You're in homecoming night against the Warriors. Young handed to Wilson that time. Davis a Stuffed at the line. Play. Yep, I think they're going to give the ball. A little misdirection play there that time. It looked like the old cross buck play, and just unfortunately for the Eagles, the first turnover for them on the night. It's going to give the Warriors a football back with 5.29 to go in pretty good field position. That ball got out quick and was scooped up quick. Warriors take over at the Eagle 43 with 5.29 left to go in the first half. Hall back to pass, low snap there. Plenty of time looking for Hunt downfield, and he caught it over the receiver's head. And I think they're going to call pass inter offensive pass interference. They should. He had his hands out and pushed off the receiver or the defender. That was Rice on the coverage? Yep, that's what he called. He called offensive pass interference. Good call by the official. I don't say that too often. No. The Warriors, they've had multiple big passing plays, really, on two fly routes, three fly routes, excuse me, and they've all been called back. The Warriors receivers, the way their playbook is set up for Hall, because they have four guys, five guys running routes in every play, they, it, it's all option routes. So they have they can either break for a post, stay for a fly, run a corner. That pass is incomplete in the flat. Jacob Wilson right there to knock the ball away or knock it out of the offensive receiver's hands. And, again, good coverage that time by the defense of the Eagles. Again, that time Wilson, being a defensive lineman, did a nice job as a defensive end contained on that outside screen pass. 5.15 left to go in the half. Trip to the left side. The Warriors throw the ball 88% of the time out of this formation. And here's the pass. Quick pressure, jailbreak screen. That's Cunningham. He's got room upfield. Breaks through the defense. 10. And he's tripped up by Rice. Great open field tackle, saved the touchdown there. Again, they had that pressure coming, and the quarterback for Edgewood, Tony Hall, did a nice job of being patient, finding that receiver. Big gain for the Warriors. They love that tunnel screen play to Cunningham. Cut it up field, plenty of speed, head full of steam. He stopped at the 16. Fade route. That ball's caught in the end zone. Cunningham. That's Cunningham again. The Warriors get on the board, 34-6, Eagles still lead. 
Good fade right route there by Cunningham. Perfect throw by Hall. Yeah, Hall did a nice job of throwing it up. You got uh, the receiver Cunningham, six foot two, six three, and he just outreached the defender for the football. That turnover comes back to haunt the Eagles as they give up a, a six points, the first six points of the night. Warriors going for two. Pressure in the backfield. That ball's complete. Good for the two points. 34-8, Eagles lead. Yeah, Hall rolled to his right. They had that right portion of the end zone kind of flooded with Warriors, and he found number 34 wide open. Not wide open, but uh, open in that end zone there, and they converted their two-point. So 34 to eight, if it ends like this, we're looking at a running clock in the second half, but right now it's less than 30. So we'll see if the Eagles can put some points on the board here. 446 to go as quickly as they've scored tonight. It's not out of the question. This Eagles team typically known for their ground and pound. They've had some good passing plays the few times they have thrown the ball. And they've been, this as you said, too successful. When you run the ball as well as you do and you can then option out of that or do the run pass option, which they've done a couple times tonight, gets that defense on their heels. And as we said, uh, quarterback Kenny Young's done a nice job of throwing the football tonight. Really good play call um, on the offensive side by offensive coordinator Matt Pete as well. Mix it up a ton, nothing really repetitive. And – his offense has yet to be stopped besides that fumble. Yeah, they basically shot themselves in the foot there with that fumble. But it's been the only mistake the offense has made all night. Ty Vensel, the place kicker. Back to kick for his first of the night. That, boot, that ball's booted on a line drive into the hands of Deemer. Finds room up the middle. Decent return there. Eagles take over at the 35-yard line. Nice job that time again, as you said, ran straight ahead. Good, pretty good field position to start this drive. Looks like it's going to be about the 30, 38-yard line. Four thirty-eight left to go in the half. Coach, you drive down the field in a methodical drive like the Eagles do a lot of times this season they have and just try to punch one in with little to no time left on the clock, or do you score as fast as you can? Yeah, I think you try to, you know, I think you take what you can get, but I think they're going to try to run the football here, take care of the football, not turn it over and see what happens if it's going to be a short, quick drive or if it's going to be methodical. As you can see early on, they give it to Wilson right up the middle and gain a couple, but I think that's kind of what Coach Shimsky and Coach Pete want to do offensively is you know, take their time. They're a lot of time, but we still have four minutes and 20 seconds to go. They're still huddling up, but I can see them. I would be surprised if they threw it, but you never know. Might mix it up a bit. Wide right is Rice. Young keeps it himself. Gets to the outside corner. Goes for the stiff arm. Gains a few. It'll be third and about three. Yeah, Edgewood did a nice job of not giving up the corner there as Young tried to turn it up and just basically ran out of room, got shoved out of bounds. So it's going to be, as you said, third and looks like about one, maybe a long, long one. We talked about it earlier. Young was a wide receiver last year. Instead, and I've been impressed with him, as you said too. It's you know this is game seven, so he's matured very well this season. That's Smith in motion. Pitch to Smith, looking for a cut up field spin move. Gets back to about the line of scrimmage, a little bit farther. It'll be second and about eight or nine. Yeah, that's that old. Basically, they call it a belly play. He really can see you. Young kind of went really wide. What that does is give him, gives him some room to read where he can make a cutback move there and didn't have much on that play. As you said, got about two yards.
That's Wilson and Pete in the backfield. Young back to pass. Fires downfield looking for Deemer. He caught that ball. The defender jumped a little bit early, and Deemer came down with the great catch. Yeah, Young kind of floated it up there. Basically, it was kind of just, uh, and as you said, Deemer was very patient, waited for it. The Edgewood defender had his back turned, really didn't see the football. If he had turned his back and turned his head to see, he might have been able to deflect that away. But big break there by the Eagles is, wasn't the prettiest pass, but it was completed for a big first down. That's the hand there to Deemer again. Deemer on that pass play with the jump ball using some of those basketball skills. Things carry over. Two twenty six left to go in the half. Eagles have the ball. Second and three on the Warrior 10. Warriors trying to stop this Eagles offense that has been really running downhill the whole game. Bunch formation in the left. Wildcat play. Smith jumps on that one. And did the smart thing there. Didn't try to pick it up and run with it. Wanted to make sure he kept possession of the football. It's going to be third down so you're basically in two down territory unless you decide to try to kick a field goal but it's going to be third down in about 15 it looks like 140 left to go in the first half Young back under center hands to Deemer shuffles a couple defenders and he's nearly Slammed to the ground by linebacker Seth Enos. Looks like they're going to mark it at the original line of scrimmage, so he got five yards, the original five yards back. Maybe not quite. It's going to be fourth and about 11. Nice guy move there by Enos to not Brock Lesnar suplex uh, Deemer at the end of that play. Coach Chimsky here may be going to call a timeout. Run the clock down, call timeout. Give uh, Pfeiffer a try to kick one. It'd be nice to see it. He'd be a 35-yarder. Uh, 35, 35 Take it seven yards back. Is that what they do? Yeah, that, this would be Pfeiffer's longest attempt of the year. 41 seconds left to go in the first half. Eagles have the ball fourth and 11. Seems as though they're going to give the soccer player converted kicker Owen Pfeiffer an attempt at a 35-yarder. Here on homecoming night, this Eagles offense has been nothing short of phenomenal. 34 points on 34 points on the board, excuse me, in the first half. Defense has been great, coach. Yeah, they've been an outstanding. The only kind of breakdown they had is that fumble offensively that led to a Warrior score. But other than that, it's been a pretty clean game by the both sides of the football. All week on the defensive side of the football, the game plan has been apply pressure to halt. Towards the end there, they, they were getting uh, – a little bit tired, I think, because the Warriors' offense moves quick. Not a lot of pressure, but their secondary has been pretty good today. It has been. They've done a nice job, and they've done a nice job of recovering to open receivers and making quick open field tackles. Looks like they're going to go, not kick. Young in the shotgun. Wilson to his left. Young back to pass. Pressure coming. Fires that ball. That ball's caught, but out of bounds by Smith. The Warriors first force a turnover there. Take over on the 18-yard line. 35 seconds left to go in the half. The Warriors have no timeouts left, hoping to put themselves on the board for the half. As if you're the Eagle defense here, you don't want to fall asleep. 35 seconds to go in the half. Don't let anybody get behind you. Make sure you make good tackles. Looks like the Eagles are going to be running cover four here. 
four man front. Hall back to pass. Looks downfield. That's Hazler applying pressure. Ball downfield. That ball's nearly grabbed with one hand by number 14. Kind of Hall got lucky there because I think there was, looked like there were three Eagles around that defender. And again, number 14, Edgewood, we don't have a number 14 on our roster. I love schools that give you rosters and they not correct. 28 seconds left to go in the half. Warriors trying to get on the board for the second time tonight. 34-8 our score. You're on homecoming night. Hall in the shotgun. Quick pass. Screen dropped. That was Cunningham. They, Again, they he, was, a I, he, he was either looking to not get hit or looking to run with a football before he caught it, but his head was moving upfield. And again, good pursuit by the Eagle defense. Had a defender coming down pretty hard on him. And again, that caused for him to miss the pass. That's happened a handful of times now where the receiver just wanted to run before he had the ball. Lack of focus. Yeah, fundamentals there. You got to catch it before you go. Hall looking. Pressure coming. Checks down to Lucas in the flat. Taken down by Queen, Wright, and Wilson for no gain. Queen did a nice job recovering there. He kind of slipped early on and then got up and pursued and made uh, or assisted in that tackle. Geneva must have called timeout because I think Edgewood's out of timeouts, correct? With 13 seconds left in the half, the Eagles burn their first timeout, excuse me, their second timeout, hoping to get the ball back and maybe score one more time. As they they deferred in the beginning of the game, they received the ball in the second half. See if they try to block it here. This would be a good time to go after the punter. Put some pressure on him, maybe they don't block it or get to it, make him rush it and quit and make it uh, a poor punt, get decent field position, maybe enough time you could at least maybe try to pitch one into the end zone and the old Hail Mary play the end of half. Edge was lining up in twins, two receivers on both sides of the ball. Hall's back to punt. That kick is up. And another short kick. Eagles got to hope to let this one drop. Bounce favoring the Eagles. Now see the ball's Edgewood. clocked with five seconds left in the game. Edgewood. Excuse me, the half. If Edgewood's player was smart there, he'd let that, even though the ball was coming back, five seconds to go, probably would have ran the clock out. Now the Eagles are going to have a chance to throw it up, maybe get one in the end zone, see if they can score here at the end of the half. Just like basketball, clock and situation, time and situation. Young is known for having a cannon for an arm. This, this is a throw he can definitely make from 40 yards out if the Eagles decide to go Hail Mary here. Five seconds left to go. The Eagles line up with twins. Young firing downfield. That ball is picked. That's number three, Cunningham. He caught it in the end zone, so it's a. They're going to call that a touchback, but that's not going to matter. End of the first half, Eagles lead 34 to 8 against the Edgewood Warriors here on homecoming night. I'm joined by special guest, retired teacher and former head basketball coach, Brad Ellis. With that, we're going to hand things over to the band. Enjoy the halftime performance.
our first selection is a song by the English rock band The Who. We'll feature trumpet players Jason Davis, Matthew Drummer, Angelina Wagner, Ashley Little, and Jocelyn Nicholas. This is I Can See for Miles.
Ladies and gentlemen, you can have your Christmas Christmas graphic at this point. Tonight's graphic is winner with $368. And your winning number for the 50-50 raffle is 649310. 649310. If you have the many tickets, bring it to the north end of the world and come back. Tonight's homecoming game as the Warriors visit your Geneva Eagles at the Spire Institute. The Eagles lead by a score of 34 to 8, putting on an offensive clinic. The Eagles have 199 yards on the ground tonight, while Edgewood has 15. Passing yards tonight, Geneva with 86, Edgewood 113. Leading rusher for the Eagles, Hayden Deemer, three touchdowns, 141 yards. And for the Warriors, not a lot going on on the ground. Zeke Lucas leads the team with seven yards. In receiving yardage, Deemer leads the way for Geneva with 47 yards and Cunningham for the Edgewood Warriors with 54 yards. 
a lot of those uh, Cunningham could add a few more yards if he would stop looking upfield and want to run with the football or avoid being hit first. But, uh, again, as you said, total domination by the Eagles, both offensively and defensively. The only thing that you could probably go in and talk about at halftime is taking care of the football. They had that one fumble. The interception at the end of the half was a Hail Mary play. So, I mean, it was a turnover, but that turnover at midfield on the fumble led to Edgewood scoring, only scoring drive uh, as we start get ready here to start the second half. I'm joined tonight by special guest, former teacher and former longtime head basketball coach, Mr. Brad Ellis. Coach, thanks for joining me tonight. Yeah, it's nice to be here. It's nice to see a, a game and a good Eagle lead right now. Hopefully it'll continue and you know, walk out of here with a W. The Eagles deferred before the game as Bensel goes back to kick for the Warriors. We are underway in the second half at the Spire Institute. That kick goes out of bounds. That's going to be a penalty flag. So the Eagles are going to take over again. Good, good field position. Yes. Failed well, squib kick there. Yeah, it was not a – I think they're going to spot it. I believe it's the 40-yard line. And, nope, 35. I thought it was the 40, but that must be something else. Don't get old, Jack. You lose, you lose thoughts sometimes. Eagles have the ball to start the second half, starting on their own 35-yard line. We'll see what kind of adjustments Edgewood made defensively here as Geneva dominated that first half, as you pointed out early, 199 yards on the ground. They've got to come up with a solution to stop this running game. Young under center this time. That's Smith in motion. Hands to Wilson up the middle. Good for a gain of about seven. Yeah, that was a little, again, a little counter play that time they gave it to Wilson most of the night he's been running straight ahead that was a little off tackle play after a handoff fake handoff nice job by Wilson getting through the hole quickly and picking up eight yards second and two from the Eagle 43 Smith in motion hand to Smith he's got some room on the outside loses the defender and he's wrapped up after the first down marker good for gain of about four Patient running there that time by Wils or by Smith did a nice job of Edgewood stringing the play out, and he kind of was patient before he found that little gap in the defense and make that little cutback move and get enough yards for the first down. Smith, if you remember, opening offensive play for the Eagles had a 40-yard touchdown. And that's one thing I've noticed with the Eagles running, but all the running backs are very patient runners and they're, they're looking for their seams so they can make their cutbacks. Hand it to Wilson up the middle. Legs turning, he's going for the first down. It's going to be about a yard short. Good run there after contact. I think they're going to give him the mark on the first down. He's moving the chain, so that little extra at the end got him that extra half a yard on the officials. Game a good spot, and we're going to be first and 10. 34 8 our score. The clock runs in the second half upon a 30 point lead. So if the Eagles score here, the clock will run. A little misdirection there. Hand to Smith. Keeps his legs turning. Good for a gain of about nine. It looked like he went down there. Yeah, he did a nice job, as you said. Kept those legs turning, kind of got low to the ground and got those couple extra yards. Again, a nice little play action there by the Eagles. Quarterback Kenny Young did a nice job. Those ball fakes they have on those misdirection plays are so key to this wing T offense. We've harped on it all night how good these backs are. But Smith. He's probably the best of the backs as there's a hand to Wilson up the middle. He gets Every time he gets the ball, I feel like he's in full speed, whereas the other guys take a second to get running. Smith is always running at full speed with the ball, and I feel like that's why he gets so many yards. He gets so many good games, and coming in a nice game, he's one of the leaders in yards per carry in the county. You said, what was it, eight yards per eight game? Yards, yards per run? coming in, and I'm sure it's going to be increased tonight because he had that big couple big uh, gains. He had that... Uh, uh, what, 60-yard touchdown run early on, I believe. Hand there to Deemer. Some extra yards there. 
Runs good for about five. Deemer, the lead rusher for the Eagles, we mentioned it earlier. He's nearing 150 yards of the night and a hat trick of touchdowns. The thing about these running backs too, Jack, is they do an, they're not real big. But they've got, it looks like they've got extreme uh, lower body strength. And when they get hit, they keep those legs moving and they get those couple extra yards. They're very elusive athletic backs as they hand the Wilson up the middle. Sheds a couple defenders and he's wrapped up, taken down after the first down marker. Good for a gain of about seven. And again, the second half starting out very familiar to the first half as the Eagles are dominating that offensive line opening up some big holes and when you get those quick hitters like they just did with Wilson it's so important for those got offensive linemen to get off the line of scrimmage and get those blocks quickly and they've done a nice job here early in this third quarter 8 30 left to go in the third quarter that's Smith in motion hand to Wilson again trucks the defender and he's taken down after games about four Again, good, strong run by Jacob Wilson there. Got hit early, kept those legs churning, got those couple extra yards. And the only thing I could, would like to see maybe with him is sometimes he runs too high. He needs to get a little lower and that stands up a little bit, especially after he breaks that first tackle. He has a tendency to stand a little bit. This drive now approaching over four minutes of clock time. It's not unusual for the Eagles to take up the entire third quarter on offense. It's happened three or four times this year. There's another hand to Wilson up the middle. And I think that's what Coach Shimsky and Coach Pete want to do. They want to control the, the football. They want to move the chains, uh, make it a long, methodical drive. I think just early on they had those real quick scores and put them up big early. But I think this is kind of their game plan, give the defense a little bit of time to rest keep the other team's defense on their heels. Eagles offense have it third and five on the 12. That's Smith in motion. Pitch to Smith. Cuts up field. He's got some room. Going for the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Again, that quick, that pitch, yep, that pitch back, that belly series there that kind of gives him a little bit of room to uh, see where he can make his cutback move. And again, very patient. On that move, look for that opening, did a nice job, got to the corner, and Eagles are going to run this, have this clock being run now. It's a 40 to 8, I guess not quite yet. It's forgot Edgewood got the two points, so it's only a, it is a 32 point game. I'm surprised they didn't have the clock running. Pfeiffer to kick is up, and it is good. The junior cross country and track runner. And kicker, Owen Pfeiffer, is 6 of 7 from the PATs tonight. The only miss coming on a blocked attempt. Eagles came out. We talked about it at the half, Coach. All they had to do was really come out and score one quick one. Clock's running. Maybe we can get out of here faster than the first half occurred. That's a good thing when you get my age, you know, that, uh, that bedtime gets comes earlier and earlier. You got a tea time at 8.30. You got to get to bed. That's right. See, it looks like uh, Smith might be shaken up a little bit. He was kind of has his helmet off, and kind of they were looking at his shoulder or his neck. But he's out there. Looks like he's going to be on the kickoff. Oh, now they're now he's looking back, putting his helmet on. He's going to be okay. Something about Smith. I've been around him, whether it be watching him play or playing on teams with him. He's one of the toughest kids. He's tough as a nail when it comes to sports injuries. He's like, nah, I'm good. He, he, he can play through pain. I think against Orange, he had a strained calf. And he was uh, – actually, no, it was Kirtland and Orange. He had a strained calf. He's typically the holder. He was not holding. Played through the game, and then between those two games combined, he had near 150 yards. And when I've seen him play football and play basketball, too, it impresses me. He plays hard all the time, too. He never lets up which is a nice attribute to have as an athlete. All right, they started the clock here. The clock will stop on an injury, and I believe it stops on the exchange of 
uh, turnover on downs, I believe they stop it. But other than that, incomplete passes, penalties, the clock will run. Pfeiffer kicks this one away. Fielded by Cunningham. Gets up to about the 25. Cuts up field, has some room. And he's going to be dragged out of bounds near the 47. Fumbled the ball, but it ended up going out of bounds. So Edgewood will maintain possession. That seemed to be to their avail because he kind of threw it forwards. I think they're going to spot it where he fumbled, though. I don't think you can. Because I think it went out of bounds about the 50, and they're going to look like they're spotting it about the 45. Best return by the Warriors all night, and they've had a few chances to return kickoffs. More than a few. 5.57 left to go in the third quarter. That's Hall pitches that one to Luke. To Cunningham, turns a corner. He's got room to the sideline and taken out of bounds. Good for a gain of about four. Nice job by the defense there, stringing it out. He had nowhere to cut it up. Finally, just put his head down and got those couple extra yards. It's going to be third down or second down at about four. Looks like he might have picked up six. Hall on the shotgun with trips to his right. Hand to Lucas up the middle. He's going to keep pumping for a few extra yards after contact. Just kept his feet moving. Gained an extra four after the after the tough contact in the middle of the field. And he got the first down, so the chains are moving. Five minutes left to go in the third quarter. Trips to the left of Hall this time. Takes the ball under center. Keeps it himself for the screen. He's going to be wrapped up around, well, for a gain of about three or four. Again, that's a nice job by the Eagle defense. They throw that screen pass after the inside fake handoff, but notice he came back inside, and Eagles maintained and stayed in their lanes defensively, and he could, didn't have anywhere, anywhere to run after he caught the ball. Hand up the middle this time. Lucas again. He's a little little guy that's a pretty tough runner. They list him at 5'9", 190. I don't doesn't look like he's 190 to me, but I believe on the carry that was linebacker Seth Enos. Oh, was that Enos on that? Throw this time. And that's another drop by Cunningham. He ran a pretty good route, a little stop route. Yeah, it was a well-designed play. He was open and just they can't bring the ball down. 3.45 left to go in the third quarter. The Warriors trying to scrounge back from this huge 33-point deficit. Hall on the shotgun. Eagles defense looking like it's blitzing. Plenty of pressure coming. Little screen play into the flat. That ball's out. They're going to call that pass incomplete, though. Fourth down, so. Going to change over possession here. And they will stop the clock here as to. I think once they set the football, they're going to start it up. There they go. They're going to start it up. Like you said, the clock moving now. 3.09 left to go in the third quarter. Eagles have it first and 10 from their own 31. Geneva's going to call a timeout. Not sure if they didn't have the right personnel in the huddle. If you're just tuning in here on homecoming night, for the homecoming game, excuse me, the Eagles lead by a score of 41-8 against the visiting Edgewood Warriors. Joining me is special guest, retired teacher, and former longtime head basketball coach, Mr. Brad Ellis. Not sure why they call timeout. Looks like uh, Smith up. He's up again. He was down on one knee. I didn't know if maybe they're going to make some substitutions here. We'll see who's they put in the. Looks like the first group still in the huddle. You'd have to assume after the third quarter winds down, the JV guys will get some reps. 
Before we resume play, I want to shout out our, project our production team. On the tech side of things, we have Logan Snyder. Thank you, Logan. Izzy Rose doing the camera, and Caden Davis providing the stats for us tonight. It was young on the hand of Deemer. Deemer looking to get outside. Gets backed around the line of scrimmage there. Nice job defensively that time by the Warriors. Strung that out. Deemer was looking for some kind of a cutback lane. Couldn't find anything. So it's going to be second and a long nine. Might have got a yard on that play. Seems like on the, on the far outside runs, on the um, outside shoulders of the tackles, the Warriors have cleaned up their um, defensive game. Hand up the middle that time. Again, the Eagles being very methodical here, huddling up. And some guys coming in and out. It's going to be third and about eight, I'm guessing. Obviously, you want to keep the ball in your possession for as long as possible for the Eagles going to get the game over with. Now, do you throw the ball here on third and long? No, I don't. Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't think they will. I could see something, a uh, little counteraction play, try to get one of the, maybe Smith, get him on the outside. Young's yep. going to keep it himself here. Gets to the outside. Looks like he's just short of the first down. Now, here's the question. Do you go for it? Geneva hasn't punted all night. They have not. I don't see. I think it's short enough where I think you do go for it. Keep your defense off the field. Keep your guys fresh. Clock winds on the 113. Fourth and one. Edge was going to load the box. They got a guy to jump. That's number, no, number 45, Seth Enos. The Eagles get the first down due to the offside penalty. Enos. The game is pretty much out of reach right now, but those are the mistakes that you cannot make. You got a team fourth and one in their own territory, and you jump offside, give them that first down. This will probably be, definitely be the final play of the third quarter as we're down to under 40 seconds. 35 ticks left in the third quarter as Young hands to Deemer. He's got some room upfield, good for a gain of about five. Yep, that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Clock winds down to 13 seconds left in the third quarter as the Eagles let this one drown out to go to the fourth. They lead 41-8 to eight here during the homecoming game against the Edgewood Warriors. Here at the Spire Institute, a beautiful night, but a chilly one. This Eagles offense has done a great job throwing a bunch of different looks at the Warriors. All the same formation, but a bunch of misdirections, a bunch of lead blockers coming from motioning men. What do you think about this Eagles offense tonight, Coach? Well, again, it starts up front, and I'm impressed with the offensive line coming into the season. I think you've, you asked Coach Shimsky what he was maybe most concerned about would be that offensive line because of the loss to graduation that they had last year. But as you said earlier, Johnny Hazler being a senior leader on that offensive line, and they've really matured and done a nice job. And I think if you look at the first game, when they played Madison and struggled offensively most of the night uh, and what they've done as the season progresses, got themselves to four and two and looking tonight to go five and two and three and one in the CBC. Uh, and then you got some athletes, that, guys that are good decision makers that run the football, that know how to cut back, how to keep their balance. And uh, I've been real impressed with this offense, but again, we're very happy and, uh, impressed with that offensive line. No hands to Wilson there. Uh, you mentioned that the line was of question coming into the year. They only have two guys, two returning starters from the previous season, and this line has been pretty good all year. Yeah, they've run the football. You got guys like uh, we talked about early on that uh, Smith's averaging eight yards a carry, Deemer's averaging five yards a carry. When you got your backs. 
uh, gaining at least uh, or averaging eight to five yards a carry. That's you got some nice young blockers up front doing their job. And there to Deemer on the misdirection. Good for an eagle first down. There's that, again, as you said, that misdirection play. And again, I mean, you got to be impressed with, again, you talked earlier about the quarterback, Kenny Young, being a wide receiver last year. It's not easy coming in and learning this offense. Um, and he's done an outstanding job of maturing as this year is going on as well. I'm impressed with his ball handling ball fakes because this is a lot of this wing T is a lot of misdirection uh, and he's done a great job handling this offense as nearly the same play just flip sides that's Smith this time Ten thirty left to go in the game Eagles lead by 33 and you got to have guys too you talk about this offense the uh, guys that don't get the football the guys that are you know get the fakes from Kenny Young that that carry out the fakes too that's so important in this type of offense and uh, they've come a long way since game 1 that time that was Smith up the middle Wilson excuse me About what time do you throw the JV squad in, Coach? I think after this possession, you might see a few guys in. Again, by the time if they can, are methodical and keep this running down, there won't be much time left. And there to Smith on the outside. He had touched on the same play earlier. He's gonna, they're going to call him short of the first down. Oh, they're going to give him the first down. It's exactly what they wanted to do. Again, just move the chains, keep the clock running. Let's get out of here tonight with a good win and everybody stays staying healthy. Nine oh eight left to go in the game. Eagles marching down the field. They have the ball on the Warrior twenty eight. Hand to Wilson there. Good game there. Got He's a gonna flag be wrapped up on the play. play. Edgewood's coach Cooper on the field. They're going to call him holding on the Eagles. So though what was a gain of eight is going to turn into a negate of ten. Looks like Edgewood might have called timeout. The clock is stopped with 8.39. It wouldn't stop on a penalty. Both side teams are, as you can see, are on the sideline here. So Edgewood must have called timeout. That's Edgewood's first timeout of the second half. They burned all three in the first half. Quickly. Qu very quickly. And I think the way that first half, first quarter went, I think I'd have been calling a timeout as well. Cooper might have just, Coach Cooper might have called time out there too, just with his clock running and this grinding of this offense. He might just wanted to give his guys a break. Yeah, this defense has definitely been worn down all night. Young under center. Pitches this one to Smith. Decent game there. On first and 22. Again, that old big wide pitch back gives Smith some room to look and see where he can make his cutbacks. And it's that old student body right that. Remember that from the day to USC? You know, you wouldn't remember that. <laughs> I'm, I, I know what you're talking about. Interesting there to see Wilson line up as a tight end for that play. Got an extra blocker in there. 7.52 left, left to play. Eagles have it at the Warrior 35, second and 17. As Deemer in motion, hand to Wilson up the middle. Looks like he got back close to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third 
Yeah, I guess he's a little short. Third and about 13. Scoreboard has 12. Third and 12. If you're the Eagles, do you run the ball here? I think so. You're in two down territory. Run the clock. You don't need any more points on the board. Try to get a first down on the ground. Now, say they get it to, we'll say, fourth and sixth. Do you run out the kicker, let him get a try, or do you go for it, or you punt it? I think you go for it, run the clock out. Young back now to pass. Throw. Flying towards the sideline, that's Deemer. I think that surprised everybody. Nice job that time by Kenny Young setting up a nice little play action pass and did a nice job of setting his feet and he fired that one right on target to Deemer. It's going to be but fourth and about four. Yeah, good pick up there. Good for Deemer. Good to put Deemer over 50 yards receiving for the night. Young under center this time. Wilson and Smith in the backfield. Hand to Wilson up the middle on fourth down. They're going to sit, and they, the Warriors stripped that ball out. Yeah, and again, that was. Warriors defense, they're coming with a big stop to get the ball back. 6.08 left to play as one of the linebackers are just stripped the ball out of Jake Wilson's hands. And I think that situation there is we talked about earlier, but sometimes Jake Wilson has a tendency to stand up when he runs the football. And I think that's what led to that, that ball being stripped. 6.08 left to play, and we have a player down on the field. Looks like an Edgewood Warrior. Looks like they got lower extremities, so I'm not sure if it's a knee or an ankle. So what's the festivities tomorrow for homecoming? The dance at the high school? The dance is at the high school. We put up, I believe they put up big... Uh, black pieces of paper over the windows. Gets all dark in there. Turn the lights off and uh, got a DJ going. Should be a good time. Are you the DJ? Absolutely not. No, I'm uh, no. I'm not the DJ. It's always a good time homecoming and brings back memories from way, way back in the day. Did you ever my horse and buggy picked up my date. <laughs> Did you ever uh, chaperone any of the uh, oh, I homecoming didn't. dances? I used to chaperone the. We used to have them at the Progress Center. Really? I think that's. Is that what it's called now? It might be called something else, but it's over on Depot Road over there in Saybrook, Ashtabula. Oh, yeah. It was wall to wall, people. Wall? <laughs> it was wall to wall. Oh, it's tight in there. And it always seemed like Ohio State was playing that night, so we'd always have to. That was. You know, have to go out, check the scores, and find out what was going on, but no, those were. High school memories. I might be doing the same thing. What time does Ohio State play tomorrow? They're at 3.30 tomorrow. Oh, I can catch the game. Then yeah, I got I got no problems at all. Rutgers at home. I'll be able to catch. I'll be able to listen to the Ohio State game before the dance. Here's Hall under center. Back to pass. Looks at Cunningham on the backside. Finds another guy on the screen that looks like Hunt. Gets near the first down marker. Good Good yards after the catch there. Yeah, he did a nice job of catching the ball first and turning it up. And as you said, Jack got some room down the sideline. And it looks like he's going to mark him. They're going to mark him a little short. Going to be second and one. As we're under the six-minute mark here of this football game. Three receivers to Hall's left. Looking on his backside to pass. Has a guy in the flat. Looking downfield. Pass complete. Good pitch and catch there. That was Austin Zoll with the catch. A little out and go route there. And Wilson, uh, I'm sorry, Smith, Luke Smith saw the play coming, just didn't react quick enough, got over and made the tackle. Ball thrown a little bit behind Zoll. Good athletic play to get behind that one. 
Cunningham caught the ball that time, but he caught it with his knee down, so it's going to be down right there. 4.55 left to go in the game. 41 to 8. The Eagles lead here on homecoming night against the Edward Warriors. Two running backs in the backfield with Hall. That's Lucas and Cunningham. Hand to Cunningham. Gets to the outside. Missed tackle by Queen. And he's going to be wrapped up by Bryce Pete. And Queen did a nice job of stringing the play out. Just missed the tackle, but had a host of tacklers coming in led by Pete. Warriors have it now. Second to 11 with 420 left to go in the game. Ball on the Eagle 46. Keep in mind the clock, running clock for the rest of the game. Four minutes now left to play. Hauled back to pass. Pass rush coming. That's Wilson. And that pass is going to be incomplete. Maybe some intentional that's grounding. That's got to be intentional grounding. I don't know. I don't see a flag, but that's got to be. He had nobody in the area to throw. He was outside the pocket, but in the grass there, I would think we'll see what they call. Great pass rush there by Jake Wilson, all alone on that right side. I guess they're going to call it an incomplete pass. So they're going to put it down in the 45 yard line. It's going to be fourth and 10. Obviously, the Warriors have to go for it. Got to try to end the night on something um, positive on the offensive side of the ball. And and they haven't been able to manage much. If they don't get a first down here, I don't think they're going to see the football again tonight with this clock running. And Eagles going to be taking over here. A little screen pass. Pass there deflected. That's number eight, Jake Wilson, off his hand. And that's what you're taught to do as a defensive lineman. If you can't get to the quarterback and he throws, that cut, that arm goes back, you get your hands up and try to deflect it, and that's exactly what Wilson did there. Nice job by Jacob, and Eagles are going to take over first and 10 with 3.03 to go in this football game. Two great plays there at the end of that drive by Wilson and the defense. Pass rush was great there. Made up for that fumble. Didn't want to give up a score. So, nice, again, great job that time, as you said. Made a nice sack on the quarterback, and which they did call an incomplete pass, so he didn't get credit for it. Should have been, and then did a nice job there, batting the ball down. Out now is the JV squad with 2.50 left to go. Luke Barbo has been playing wide receiver all night. He shifted over to quarterback. He'll be under center this time with Abe Rosales in the backfield. Hand in to Rosales. Looks like it's going to be a face mask. Quarter, quarterback Tony Hall with a the tackle there. And the flag came in, came in for the play. Nope, they're going to call holding on Geneva. Clock clicks down to 2.20 left to go in the game. It's going to be first and 20 from the Eagle 35. This is valuable experience for these guys that are on the field. They do play Saturday morning, but they get a chance to play under the lights on Friday night. Any experience you can get like that is going to help them down the road. Absolutely. Not a lot of not a lot of seniors leaving the squad. There's only five that really play. But there's a handful of guys in this JV team that can definitely make an impact next year. And experience is the best way to get accustomed to playing under the lights. That's Barbo on the keeper. Second down. Now we got an injured player. One of the Edgewood linebackers down on the field. Made a, good, a decent hit on Barbo right there. Man, slow getting up, but I think it looks like me like he got Luke went when Luke went down to get tackled, he kind of lowered his shoulder, and I think he his shoulder hit his forearm or wrist. I think that's what yeah, but it's good to see him up and running off the field. And One thirty-one left to go. Continuous clock. Second and 18. Eagles have the ball on their own 37. All week, I've been talking to the guys on the varsity squad, some of the guys in the JV squad. They've been telling me 
th they came tonight to chop some wood. They've done nothing short of that as they have a 33-point lead at, here at the end of the game. Going to improve to five and two and three and one in the CVC. Only lost to Kirtland. Kirtland's the only loss coming in to in the CVC was to Perry. Those two teams are playing tonight and have not heard a score in that game. Both extremely good teams. Fifty seconds left to go in the game. Eagles have it third and thirteen at their own forty-two. Probably let the clock drain out as long as they can. Run one more play and get out of here. Twenty-five seconds left to go now as the Eagles man the line of scrimmage. Barbo under center. Hands that one off. That's Abe Rosales. And that's the ball game. 41-8 our final as the clock winds down to three seconds. Here on homecoming, here for the homecoming game, your Eagles win by a 33-point lead. Your Eagles improve to five and two on the season. I was joined tonight by special guest, Coach Coach Brad Ellis. Thanks for joining me, Coach. It was a lot of fun, Jack. Thanks for having me. And I, I'm going to say I'm not this is not going out on the limb, but I think you've got a great career ahead of you in broadcasting. Thank Good you, Coach. You. Forty-one eight, our final. Thank you for joining us here on GHS Media. I'm Jack Cafaro here with Mr. Brad Ellis. Have a great weekend. Be safe for homecoming. And stay tuned on Monday for a recap video. Have a great week and go Eagles.